Yeah. So what are five tips? Can you give us five tips for uh, writing and preparing a good speech? We yeah. sure can. Okay. Um, <laughs> tip number one would be to be specific. To Victoria's point, you got the job as the speaker because either you're the very best friend of that person or you know more about whatever it is you're presenting than anyone else. Okay. So we like to help people find stories and anecdotes mm -hmm. that show mm -hmm. their personal relationship and making it personal and unique. Exactly, like no one else should be able to make your speech. It should be that specific. So that's mm -hmm. number one. Yeah. yeah. Um, number, two. number two is that you should know your audience, um, which sounds obvious, but you'd be amazed at the amount of people who come to us and say, oh, I'm giving a speech at um, you know, a birthday and I'm gonna say this joke about so-and-so's uh, sexual past or their drinking activity. It's just like, no, there's always gonna be someone's grandmother in the audience or family, um, you know, and it's just not appropriate. You have to know your limits. Mm. Three. Three is we suggest not memorizing your speech. Um, a lot of people think that you're supposed to memorize it. The thing is, um, there may be a lot of Broadway actors out there, but um, we don't tend to work with them. We, we work <laughs> with people who aren't professionals, right? right. And every ounce of energy you're spending trying to remember the next line is a little bit less energy you're spending on delivering a great it. speech. So take your notes. Yeah. Um, no one remembers whether a speech was read, but everyone will remember if it should have been. Four. Okay. Four is uh, try not to rely on the gimmicks. Um, we see a lot of people um, doing the whole, I'm going to wrap my speech, I'm going to sing my speech, uh, I'm going to do an A to Z of how exciting this person is. It's a really, A, unoriginal thing to do. It's incredibly long-winded. If you actually think about it, a song, how many points can you really make about someone in mm -hmm. a song? But it's just awkward for the audience. Once the initial novelty is worn off right. and everyone's sort of thought it was funny, then it's just kind of cringy. If you see a best man walking up there with a puppet or something, everyone's like, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, going to the bathroom, everyone getting more drinks. drinks more, <laughs> starts talking. Oh. Five is to tell a story. Uh, and what we mean by that, you know, every story, like we know, has a beginning, middle, and an end. And every speech should have a beginning, middle, and an end. You should, you know, introduce us to whatever the topic is and take us on a little bit of a journey. So then when you resolve it, we're like, oh, we understand something. Either we're like, oh, my God, that person is the best person to marry in the world, or, wow, the company is a great place to work. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about attaching yourself to a story is that we tell stories every day. Um, you tell stories at the bar or over breakfast, and there should be that level so of So you, if you're writing a speech for me, you have to know a lot, right? You have yeah. to do mm -hmm. research, too. Yeah, we work with um, yeah. a questionnaire, and we ask sort of quite offbeat, quirky questions, because a lot of the time, if you just ask someone, um, you know, what are your hobbies or something, right. then you don't get the information that you really need. So some of our questions are really obscure, but they're fun, because it elicits the kind of stuff that we right. want to know about. I was told that you want to give a toast. <laughs> We're always happy to give okay. a toast. The oratory laboratory would always suggest that you prepare. Yeah. Okay. Um, Joey, is anybody not celebrating a special something? Yes. yes, we have someone right here, Martha. Oh, and what's what's your name? Hi, my name is Sari, and I'm celebrating my 50th birthday today. Oh, hey, today. happy birthday! Ah. <laughs> now, have you talked to Sari? Um, I will talk to Sari right now. Ladies and gentlemen, do not attempt this at home. I am a professional. Um, <laughs> Sari, it's your 50th birthday party. Birthday, and um, is there something about you that makes you special? Um, something you care about or you're passionate about? Well, m I'm most passionate about my family. Uh -huh. I have five children, and uh, I have hobbies, a lot of hobbies. I love cooking, I love art. You love art and you love cooking. And where are you from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, hey. me too. Can't tell. Okay. <laughs> my dear friend Nathan is going to give a few words. <laughs> Uh, in honor of Sari and her 50th birthday. Thanks, Martha. Um, you know, uh, they say that Brooklyn, if it was a city, would be the third largest city in America. Um, and I think it's only appropriate that my friend Sari lives there because when I think of her heart and her passion for life, I think she probably has one of the largest hearts in the country, if not the world. You know, and for those of you who have ever seen one of Sari's paintings, uh, you know, she can take something, a blank canvas, and just make it beautiful, which is what she does with life. She goes into the kitchen and she can just take a few ingredients. And she's like the Martha Stewart of Brooklyn. She can just whip up something so incredible. And that's one of the things that we love about our friend Sari. So let's all raise a glass. Yay. Here's to never having to say you're sorry, but to having the wonderful gifts that allow you to say, I'm Sari. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.